Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about database shutdown. So, in the last class that we saw that we started a we started the database. So, startup process is just to recap your memory. Like now, what we are doing is that we are going to the three step process. So, we are going to go to from shutdown, we go to mount, and then from mount, we go to open. Okay. So that means initially, you know, from here shut down. Then we create the instance instance creation. So instance created, and then uh, in mount we read the control file. So read control file and locate the database files and redo log files. And here in open you open the redo and data files. So these are the three steps that uh, we went in the startup mode. So now in the shutdown mode, it's going to just do in the reverse order. So the shutdown process is something like this, that we are going to first shut down, uh, you know, we, we're going to first close the database. Database files and redo files. So that's a step one. So when you do that, the first thing is that you no know, close uh, database, database file and redo log files. So remember, like you now, if we discuss about a database buffer cache and redo buffer cache, what we have is that we have some dirty buffer set here, right? And then, so this is a data files, let's say. So in case of you know, before we you know, in the process of closing the database data file, that db files and redo log files, we make sure that we write all those dirty buffers to the data files. Okay, so before we uh, close uh, the data files, it makes sure that the data files, the, sorry, database buffer cache and redo buffer is going to be written to the data files and redo files respectively. Okay, and so obviously the, the first thing is that in the in the close process, you're going to you know, plus buffer cache. And then we are going to close the files. So that is a step in the, uh, you know, so that is that is a first step in closing. And next thing is going to happen is that's going to unmount database. So in this step, in the unmount of database step, what we're going to do, we are going to di disassociate database to the instance. So this. Associate DB to instance. Then the next step is going to do. We are going to close the control file. Close control file. Okay. So then this unmount process, unmount uh, thing is got done. And the last step is in the database uh, shutdown process is called shutdown instance. So in shutdown instance, what we're going to do, we are going to release SGA, release memory structure or SGA that whatever allocated. Then number two is that going to go into the terminate the background processes. Okay. So to terminate the background process, and then with this, with all the steps, so database is is all, well, you know, this is a proper shutdown. The database is is now uh, no more available in your uh, in your machine. So there are three different modes. Okay, so there are three different modes on which you can shut down the database. The one that you give the command is called shutdown. So that means all three things are going to happen. Like it's going to uh, it's going to close the DB files, unmount, and shut down the instance. So those are by default that mode is called normal okay so if i if, if i just write shutdown that means the shutdown is normal shutdown in the normal shutdown following things happens it will not allow you no new connection that means if i shut down if i uh, you know give a command shutdown shutdown normal then no other user after that point 
can connect to the database if they want to connect database is going to send them a message that database is in the shutdown process you cannot connect anymore so no new connection however oracle is going to wait like you know the, the data file will be closed and you know, next process is going to shut down normally we will close the data files right but we cannot close the data file until all current users all current users need to disconnect okay so essentially oracle will wait until all current users are disconnected then what is going to do it is going to write the buffer caches like the, it will write the db buffer cache to the data files it is going to write the redo log rog log buffers to the read online redo log file okay so if you just if you forgotten just this remember i'm just going to do a quick reminder so this is your sj and this is your data files or databases so database so what we have in sga that we, we discussed that now we have different pools and one of this pool is called buffer cache so that means when you're doing some insert into table t is equal to some value then the first thing is not going to written into the data, database right away it is going to be written in the buffer first okay in the memory and then database writer is going to write that that part to the data file eventually so if you uh, you can review the buffer cache video um, you know which we have done sometime something back so that is the process going to do right so whenever we are going to get a shutdown statement like you know when, when database receives that okay is going to shut down then what is going to do it's going to write all the buffer cache which is available here right to the database so data files similarly the online redo buffer cache those things will be written to the online redo log file okay so write buffer cache and redo and in the next startup like if we shut down this thing this is a proper shutdown if we shut down this thing next startup does not require any instance recovery Doesn't, re doesn't require any instance recovery so this is the shutdown normal but as you know the problem here in shutdown normal let's say this in the database we have like 100 users connected so and then we want to shut down the database right we need to wait for this 100 user 100 connected user to get disconnected and it doesn't matter like you know if one of them is still connected then we, this thing is not going to succeed okay so therefore if you skip shutdown and then if nothing is happening like the system you, you may assume the system is hanging but it's not hanging is it waiting basically it is waiting all the waiting all users to be disconnected so that the shutdown process can start okay so therefore don't give shutdown give shutdown something i'm going to explain later okay. the next mode is called transactional that means i can do shutdown transactional if i do shutdown transactional the following things happens the first thing is going to do like it will no new transactions are allowed okay that means let's say to the database we have two users user one and user two so user one is doing some you know is uh, both of them are connected and user one has just now did a commit and we have already given shutdown transaction and and so that means database is already ready to getting getting shut down and then once the user one gives a commit then this user cannot do any more new transaction whereas if you two the user number two have not committed it then it can it can it can keep that transaction going and then when this user one is commit you know giving a commit that means his transaction is done therefore 
user1 will be automatically told to disconnect. So user, user number 1 will be disconnected. However, user number 2 is there. Eventually, user number 2 is going to do a commit. Then user 2 is going to be disconnected. Okay. So basically, what we're going to do, disconnected, disconnect the user once the current transaction is over. Okay, so once the current transaction is over, you can disconnect the user. And then it's also going to you know, do the same thing, you know, write to the buffer cache, to the database, data files and so on. And therefore, again, here in this case, we do not require any instance recovery. All right. The next thing is called shutdown immediate. So in this case, what's going to happen is that whatever the current SQL statement being processed, Oracle server is not going to complete. It's going to, going to, let's say for example, same case, user number one is doing some SQL. So it will tell that shut down the, you know, stop the SQL execution. It may happen that you know it is this may be in the middle of some transaction, but in that case the transaction will be rolled back. Okay, so stop SQL execution, and Oracle is going to roll back any transaction that is currently going on. So so that you know is going to roll back and then in the shutdown immediate also we are going to write from the buffer cache to the to the data files so remember in every all these cases like shutdown immediate shutdown transaction or shutdown normal we are going to always write from the buffer cache we always floss the memory to the data files so that is the thing about shutdown immediate and the last one is called shutdown abort so this is the you know if nothing works out if you know if your shutdown normal shutdown transactional shutdown immediate didn't work database hangs then probably the best way is to do is going to go for shutdown abort in shutdown abort what you're going to do instant is terminated abruptly okay so instance terminated that means that means the SGA is released and background processes are killed and then in this case we do not database no, oracle didn't have a chance to write buffer caches to the data files okay so there's no chance that it can write those things to data files and then so that whenever you're going to do startup next time automatically the instance recovery will happen Okay, so this is what is all about the shutdown process, and then uh, I think you know it's very simple, you know, straightforward. It's shutdown abrupt, or sorry, shutdown abrupt, or shutdown normal, or shutdown immediate. You just write this command. So I'm not going to show you that one right now on my uh, Oracle Oracle server, but you just can do yourself uh, this command.